we are doing my poster car, my childhood dream car, the Ferrari Testarossa. And there is a 1986 example underneath us that we are about to go and drive. And so recently, we drove Dave's poster car, the Kunta, and it was an education for me. But I reckon it was an education for you as well. Well, yeah, I'd never driven one. Right. So we both embraced this car, which I've never been keen on because I've always had those prejudices against Lamborghini because they never raced anything. And I've always had this inclination that my dream car would cut the mustard a bit finer than yours did. I have a massive sense that this car is going to impress Dave. I drove it here. I've got to say, it's a big call, but it might be one of the best cars I've ever driven. I'm not letting Dave drive the car yet. You've driven it, mate. Yeah, I know, but I need to drive it myself with you as a passenger so you can appreciate what I... I can appreciate your driving. I just want you to appreciate it before you get to drive okay. the car. The 80s, Dave, the 80s. When this car was built, I was 12 years old. Yep. I used to catch the bus to school and there was in excess graffiti on the back of the seats. All right, but I did know what a Ferrari Testarossa was. Yeah. And it was the car I had to have. It was- This is your poster car. It was my poster car. I'm a Ferrari kid. That's what I wanted. <laughs> and it had 12 cylinders and it had an open gate and that's all that mattered in the world. Well, I hope you appreciate that I've dressed appropriately for your, your 80s poster car, which to me is Miami Vice. And the greatest thing about that is because the thing works and it has good AC, you're going to be perfectly comfortable. You are going to appreciate <laughs> this. You're going to be converted. It did everything it set out to do. And it did it better than Lambo did it in every way. There's no denying that this is an iconic 80s supercar shape. I mean, it's it. incredible. All right, I'm channeling my Don Johnson. All right, so let's do this. noise you'd listen to all, all day, day long. I feel like I was born to drive it. Everything is in the right place. You point it, it follows. You open the taps, it gives you torque it's straight very, away. The, the suspension is very compliant. It's compliant. It rides well. That's one other thing it does better than the V12 in the Kunta. It gives you torque right where you need it. Right. The downdraft carby engine is a marvel and it's amazing and it yeah, delivers, but this thing delivers whenever okay. you need it. You can't compare carbies to injection. I know, that's a bit unfair. That's isn't unfair. It? I read a piece of period marketing on these cars and at the time Ferrari said it is like a Grand Prix car with a lounge chair in it. And I thought that was the biggest lot of nonsense oh, I've ever read, but yeah. it's not far off the money, Dave. It's not a Grand Prix car. It's not a Grand Prix car, but this car has got an engine descendant of nobility, right? All right, well, I gotta pull you up on that one, right? Where is the engine in this thing? In the back, yes. right? But it's up here. Yes. It's up here somewhere, and why is that, Benny? Because the, the gearbox, the gearbox is, underneath is underneath the engine, right? It works, doesn't so it? So that means that your center of gravity is up quite high in the back, mate. When you look at the gearbox, it's like a cradle for the crankcase, and it's actually quite beautiful, and it, it, it's yeah. not that high. So I reckon when we go around the corner hard, it's going to want to tip us like but that. What else do you do with a with a flat twelve? You can't really put. Well, a this flat. is the, the, the even with the Kunta, they had the, well, their, the their solution they had the great solution to put the gearbox in the in the middle between the drivers. I reckon yeah. the Kunta is more race car than this car. Because Nonsense! Whatever, mate. We took this around a track compared to the Kuntak. I reckon the Kuntak could be quicker. Whoa. Yeah, man. This doesn't have scissor doors, mate. I did notice that when I put the car in a garage last night, I had a thought. How are we going to get out of it? It's all, first of all, <laughs> it's already the widest Ferrari that they yeah. ever made, right? It's bloody wide. And then you got to get out of it in a garage. And all of a sudden, the Kunta wins a point. There you go. Here's the drop about this car, right? We're at Point Leo Estate Sculpture Garden, and we've brought a sculpture. The Berlinetta Boxer was a great car, which you couldn't put a toothbrush in. Their established clientele basically had to have something that was mid-engined, 
that they could use. Hence, right, Testarossa. Farina brought the shut lines all the way to the edges, which basically yeah. gives you big flat panels, right? Yeah. The radiators went from the front in yeah. the boxer to the side. So they don't cook right? you with all the heat coming through the cabin. So the whole cooling system is basically confined to behind the occupants yeah. and the block. They basically established that they could bring the airflow into massive openings yeah. at the side, direct the air straight into the rads and out underneath the car. Yeah. And then that design element that was absolutely iconic, the strakes. These strakes, I mean, they... They were actually there because US legislation would not allow them to have such a massive opening in the side of the car oh, in right. one unit. So, so the strakes broke them up. From. In the late 60s, when the three litre Formula One rules came out, Ferrari were left behind with horsepower output. They realised that the only way forward was a new engine and they decided to use a 180 degree V12 or basically a boxer. Yeah. Right? Like so this Porsche. is to send it like the Porsche. But to package it, yeah. they had to basically have the clutch housing at the rear, drop gears, a bit like the Dino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The drop gears went into basically the lay shaft of the gearbox which cradled the crankcase. Well, I'm looking at right? this flat 12 engine, right? The whole point of a flat 12 engine is to get it low in the chassis, it's so true. your center of gravity oh. is really low. This thing is sitting up I like don't over the top yeah. of the wheel. 911 is basically horizontal line, would probably be 30 centimeters lower, lower than, than this. Yeah. I get it, yeah. I know. But then having said that, the weight of the gearbox, it's not an insignificant lump of... of yeah, of but number. then you've got all this other lump which is above the gearbox. Well, yeah, but don't tell me it doesn't work. It works. It works. It works, the car goes forward. Self-cleaning louvers, what right? What the hell do you mean self-cleaning? Well, the airflow basically kept debris from, you know, fouling the tail lamps. Where did you read that? Horizontal lines that basically go the whole width of the car that make it look even wider than it actually is. Yeah. You, know, well, you would presence, you'd want to be careful going down a, the a small alleyway because if you make it in the front, you, <laughs> you're making it in the back. I really want to drive this car. All right, it's all yours. You drive it. Alright, let's go. Mm. Try not to run over anyone in the sculpture park. Do we look glamorous? The length and breadth of types of people that were attracted to it was endless. And these people were looking at some incredible sculptures, some really well-known sculptors, and their heads are turned yep. to the Testarossa. I mean, that's got to tell you something about the car, doesn't it? To watch this front, because it's... <laughs> What are your first impressions? I mean, as far as supercars go, it's a pretty comfy interior. Like any other interior. Like, I mean, it's just a normal interior though, isn't it? Tick. So getting in the car with Benny and driving off, I have to concede, the cabin is quite comfortable. There's, you know, plenty of space, plenty of leg room. I mean, who would have thought a cream with a brown and red carpet would work. The thing that got me straight away is the sound of that engine. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's incredible. Like the Quintage, it speaks of robustness. The car tells you that you can do whatever you need to do with it. And you crack the throttles open and the engine responds instantaneously. You just want to put your foot on the accelerator. Like, you look at Quintage, from the beginning of production till the end, there was like, what, 2,200 cars? 2,000 cars? What yeah. was it? They built Bugger more all. than 10,000 of these. It was an easy car to use, and I think that's what basically yeah. sold them. You know, Ferrari were really early adopters in cam belts. They, they really relished in not having the inertia of chains. But the problem with that is that the, the service interval for the belts on this thing is every two years. And every two years you had to pull the yeah, whole yeah. engine out to do it. Something like 30 or 40 hours to change the belts on one of these. It's, it's monumental. Yeah, it? it's crazy. Yeah, The benefit this car has is aerodynamics, I reckon. This car is a much more slippery car than the Countach. It is. The, what, the Countach probably didn't have, didn't see the inside of a wind tunnel, you know. It probably saw 
a couple of tufts of wool taped yeah, to the thing sure. going down the freeway. No, but absolutely. this thing would have had the benefit of Ferrari, when you say racing heritage, yep. it would have had the benefit of the people looking at it from an aerodynamic point of view. Yeah, it handles well. It does. Look, and it's flat. It's, it's pretty flat. flat. I don't know what it looks like from the outside, but it feels pretty flat. This is the thing. You've got the Kunta. Looks incredible. Sounds incredible. It's a real experience to drive. You have to really drive it in a certain way to get the most out of it. And then you've got the Tessarossa. Also 12 cylinders, incredible sound, great looks. No pedigree. <laughs> but it's a car that you can drive almost every day. I mean, it's very easy to drive and incredibly exciting to drive. I think listening to Dave and talking about his experience in this car, could I say I'm having a win? I don't know. I think, I think it's fair to say that if you had to really choose the better car of the two, the Testarossa is the better car. I hate it. I hate it. When Benny, no, no, I hate it when Benny is right about some stuff. But for me, the challenge of driving something wins out when it comes to me choosing a car. The Tessarossa, I love driving it. It's fast, it handles pretty well, but it's just not that much of a challenge driving it. I mean, if you're looking to get into something, classic Ferrari, which is not gonna do your head in, I think, I mean, it wins hands down. So we've both now driven our 80s poster cars. That's right. The Countach, the Testarossa. That's right. So who, which car was the winner? Testarossa. Countach. <laughs> so <Sorry>. oh. <laughs>